Anyhow, uh, so today is actually Tuesday. Been kind of sort of busy. I've uh, been trying to look for other positions as well. It's been one of those days that just certain things are not going right as to be expected, but that's okay. Um, actually, I was looking for a couple places and uh, actually got a reply back from one, a new recruiter, but he's from New York City. Expecting me to. He actually sent a little description of a job. Not really interested in it. The one that he has there is for uh, the metering systems for gas. So. What's happening is, is I have to decline gracefully on that one because I'm not even qualified close to it. Uh, because I don't even have like a plumber's license and all that. And this here is diagnostic, diagnosing those and installation as well. But something like that, I'm not even qualified near, close or too near what they are looking for on that. What I'm going to let them do, I'm going to let them know that like here's my updated CV. You can get in contact with me, but I'm looking for you know technical support for computers and all that in information technology so something like that would be more along my line instead of technical support or being a technician on the go uh, for metering systems for gas and all that uh, replacing them fixing those ones up but even then that's dangerous uh, in regards to it so something like that there that would be definitely not one that I would want to take because of the simple facts I don't mind using gas and all that, like for barbecues and all that, but for something that's dealing around with the, you know, homes, uh, commercial buildings and all that, something that I wouldn't touch myself personally because that's a risky thing there and I'm not a qualified plumber in order to deal with something like that, especially with metering systems that uh, meter gas or anything, anything liquid form, you know. So that's one thing I'm going to decline on for this particular inter uh, job interview or job position and go for something more along my lines that I'm used to which is uh, computer technique support and all that so something like that there is more along my lines um, I was also here at uh, Manpower as you can see and uh, I'm in their tent there but you know as you can see here the tent is kind of damaged here so they're gonna have to replace that soon so Hopefully they'll replace that there and decide to do another vlog today. It's 151 vlogs so far done so far. It's amazing how many vlogs you can do uh, get done in about a just over a year or so. Uh, I'm not like Chris Perlo, Perlo, another popular guy who does a vlog every day. Uh, not only of of himself, but he's also an entrepreneur online and all that. So he has his own little thing there, including. Uh, his fam his new family here, uh, they're in the uh, United States with his wife Deanna and their child J uh, Jedi, so things like that. They're, uh, he's doing like multiple uploads of uh, vlogs and all that, and if he, he seems to be very successful at that, and I wish him good luck on it, as always. I've spoken with him, well not spoken with him, I've written to him a couple of times via email. Very nice guy. Can't, can't complain. He does reply back within reason, you know, he, when he does have a chance, he does reply back. Anyhow, so I'm going to try to get some other things done today and continue on with uh, the job search and all that. And hopefully I'll find something else. And I'm still waiting on two other positions there. Uh, one I did actually do an interview for last week, and uh, one I'm waiting to hear back from people to go. The one that I had very bad experiences with uh, twice already. And on both occasions, the position that I had only lasted two weeks, so I'm very unhappy with them in regards to something like that, because uh, basically they treat their uh, people that they hire like uh, cattle, and they don't really care because they're looking for, out for their uh, for their other clients that are requesting other people, so things like that there, there's nothing much I can really do in regards to it, so try just to find another job and hopefully stay away from people to go. And they gave me a bad taste in my mouth with the last two jobs that I had. One a couple of years ago for, uh, uh, what you call it, for Air, Air Miles, and the one here for Dell and Bombardier for the migration. But uh, I know I have a, an old colleague from Dell and uh, from Dell there that's still working, and he said it was true what they had said, what uh, people go had said, but still it's just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, so it's something I'm not really happy about either from them. So, anyhow, so I'm going to be back. Well, I'm back again. So, 
I was on my way home. I actually take a look, took a look. I needed to get some gas. Spent close to about forty or fifty dollars worth of gas. The the price of gas got, has gone up per liter here. It's a 123 to 141 depending where you go. I was able to get a 126.4, so it's not too 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 bad. But still, it's fairly expensive. Uh, just to fuel up, I was almost empty. I was almost on the line of my tank there on empty, so I had to fill it up to a full tank. My father always says, "Oh, when it's a half a tank, you know, fill it up." And I'm, no, <laughs> I usually like to drain it down a little bit and you know drain it almost, oh, not exactly empty, but you know just a little bit above the E sign and then f you know fuel it up. And, it gives me some extra bonus points with the uh, CAA card that I have, so that's always helpful because that pays within itself just on uh, the gas alone. So, uh, so long as I purchase at a uh, local convenience store here or Deep Arnaud that that they call it up here, uh, I get always money returning back into the CAA. So that way, I at least pay at least pays for itself, and it's a good thing. Plus, I've used it already twice this year for boostings. Uh, where I had forgotten to turn off the lights, so it helps. <laughs> it definitely does help. Uh, the other thing as well, as I was entering in my uh, nutrition, you know, my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, like yesterday, I was just looking at the total of yesterday's amount. It was like 23, close to 2,400 calories. And I looked at it and was like, what did I eat that that went up so high? And I was looking there. I had, I had actually two pieces of uh, Schinken bread, which is a German rye bread with the kernels in it, and I had two sli two slices of that for a full sandwich. And I looked at that and went, "Okay, that's already too much just for that alone." So that kind of brought over brought up the uh, the, uh, the 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 amount of uh, calories I was supposed to take in uh, last night uh, for dinner. wasn't too 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 bad, but still. Uh, I know where to fall around on the dinners, breakfast and dinners, uh, lunches and dinners, sorry. And uh, I'm getting better at it slowly. It's just a matter of time. I've already done it for a couple of days where I've actually gone under the 2,000 calorie mark, so that's a good sign. The other times, it's, you know, I'm st it was still kind of iffy in regards to that. So uh, that there is always going to be a little thing there where you're going to have to, it's a touch and go thing for that, so... With that there, uh, it's a learning experience where I have to still try to maintain under 2,000 calories when eating food, uh, especially for lunch and dinner, and especially the bread. That's what really gets to you in regards to your eating habits. Uh, I'm trying to take less bread, uh, trying to lower the meat intake as well. But I, st I mean, I still eat meat and all that, so that's not so bad. But still, just to be able to keep everything within proportions that's always going to be a hard thing and especially with the soups uh, like I had shown um, in the uh, thing for my diet organizer I had one soup there where the sodium was really high uh, in regards to it so just that alone uh, is quite a bit on the nutritional factor uh, when I was looking at uh, the lunch that I had with it but still you know the occasional soup you know doesn't hurt uh, even if it's the you know buy two for a dollar type of thing at the dollar store, you know especially when you're having a sandwich, uh, I find that it it helps the digestion system a little bit, and it also clears the palate up a little bit as well. So that there I find it's helpful from time to time, especially you know when you don't want to have a, a a hearty soup type of thing, and I know when you get the uh, what you call it, the uh, canned soup, like Campbell's instant noodle soups. It's hard to, it's actually hard to judge uh, the the amount that you're actually taking in because the bowls themselves, like the uh, big soup bowls, uh, I don't know how much is usually in there in the soup bowl itself. What I am going to do, what I am going to try to do, is to actually measure this the amount of soup that actually goes in there and I do have a, a small little weight scale that I did purchase not too long ago for weighing you know the grams and uh, I think it also does milliliters too both in water and milk uh, so what I'm going to try to do in the soup section when I do have a bowl of soup 
is to actually weigh the soup itself and find out how much there is in there. That way I have a better idea of how much there is in milliliters just by the way because it does the conversion weight for me in either in imperial or in metric and it'll come a lot easier so what I might try to do next time around when I do have a bowl of soup with my with my lunch as an example is to actually measure it out that way and I think I can zero out the actual plate itself so it's not going to be so bad so that way I have an idea of how much water or liquid and stuff is in there so that way it'll be easier for me to actually enter that in and uh, that'll be quite a bit uh, to put it in. It takes a little extra time but once I have it into the into my organizer that will be easy to call it back up as a regular food that I would take in uh, for eating so that's not so bad uh, as for the de uh, for my the nutritionist I still haven't made a call yet I have to wait until May the 12th in order to do so uh, which is means I'm more likely going to see my doctor in July and then see the nutritionist probably sometime in August September so in the meantime what I am going to do is I'm going to continue continue on with the uh, the diet organizer to get everything in once I have that in uh, and I'm going to definitely have to replace the printer cartridges soon on my printer <coughs> once I have that entered in uh, and I actually go see the nutritionist uh, before I actually go in to see them, I'm going to actually make a hard copy uh, of what I had since uh, since the seven since the 18th of April. So that way, when they actually take a look of what I'm actually taking in, they have a better idea. So, and it, it already comes. Uh, the values already entered in and they can actually see what I'm taking in the values of you know the protein so on and so forth and make any modifications with that um, my father still doesn't understand why I'm doing this and I don't expect him to understand but my mom does understand somewhat uh, in regards to it so that she says I'm doing the right thing and I know my friend is saying all as well that I'm doing the right thing in regards to that so it's a good thing so I'm going to leave it at I'm going to continue on with that without any problems and I usually suggest you know for people who are viewing my vlogs uh, you know please if you want to if you plan to lose weight for yourself and uh, you're having problems and you have already gone to like Weight Watchers and sometimes they don't you know sometimes they do sometimes they don't work out but it, it all depends uh, if you're willing to pay the money in order and all that for it uh, for Weight Watchers I'm not really willing to pay the amount of money to join a group and uh, you know do what they say because well, it's just too expensive per month and uh, as well as you know they do have an online thing there from Weight Watchers and they do have specials you know where you can buy special food that Weight Watchers already has pre-made and all that and eaten and whatever else um, I'm not into that, and especially when it's prepared pre food from them, what they suggest. I'd rather make my own home homemade food and put the purport, you know, know what I put into the food and be able to work that way because that way I have already done most of the work because I have every all the ingredients at home already pre uh, already there, and I've already you know started to enter it into the uh, into my diet organizer. So I'm going step by step every you know every moment every along the way in entering it in to make it easier for me so when I do make my food like my breakfast lunch and dinners uh, at least I know what I'm having and that I find a lot easier to do because I know I, I know the, what I'm taking in and how much I'm taking in uh, with that there at least I can monitor what I'm eating and I can say okay instead of having you know let's say three slices of Smo uh, Polish uh, Polish uh, ham. I'll have two, or maybe one, and it makes it a lot easier, you know. So with th things like that, it makes it easier for me to enter that in, and go from there. And I can make mental judgments. Okay, I'm going to have a yogurt, or an apple, or whatever the case may be, you know. So something like that is good. I find f helpful for myself. Anyhow, the day is not done yet. I'm going to head back home and get some uh, other things done because the computers at the uh, 
at the Human Resources or as is that uh, they're not working up to stuff, and it's hard for me to apply online, and it doesn't let you do the things that you, you can do at your home computer, uh, like mine, and get things done. So I'm going to go ahead back, get apply for some more, jo uh, more pl uh, jobs there, and uh, see what happens. Let's see what I can actually dig up, okay? Well, here we go, the backyard. And I'm going to be doing some cleaning up here soon uh, to help my parents out. The backyard needs to get done. Anyhow, so I was just finishing off some job searches this afternoon, and at least I, I heard back from uh, one place, which is uh, Consul OSI. Uh, that's the job interview I had uh, last Wednesday, and it looks good, it looks promising. They're just waiting to hear in regards to, uh, to from the employer itself, which is Canadian National Ra Railways. So I'm still waiting to hear from them. Uh, they are waiting to hear from the company to see what's actually happening. I felt I had a good vibe when I actually went down there, so I'm hoping that it's a good sign. So I'm hoping that they'll actually choose me to come in and start working. So if that does happen, I'll be a very happy camper, even at the 18 or 19 dollars an hour, which is a good sign. So at this point, it's just a waiting game. I made a couple of other applications elsewhere in the meantime, including one that actually came from New York City. Uh, a guy actually uh, had a, a position open for a technician for uh, gas uh, for gas metering. Uh, yes, I am a technician by trade, uh, well, kind of like trade. Uh, but in the problem like this, there, it's dealing with the actual metering systems that are attached to either the house or towards uh, you know the commercial and industrial places. I don't have experience in regards to the fittings on all that because that ha that there is usually a delicate situation because you're dealing with gas, and not only that, that uh, it's hooked up uh, via the pipes and all that. So I don't have any experience in regards to that. And that there, when I saw it, it's like, no, this is not really for me. Simple fact is, I don't have the experience in it, uh, nor do I have a desire to work in that type of field in uh, in that area. And I explained nicely to them. I said, this is way out of my field. I'm more or less in information technology, and I explained to them what I do. And I also did give them my uh, resume in regards to maybe any other positions that they may find for other employers here in uh, Montreal or within the surrounding areas. So I'm hoping to hear from them if they do tend to call in. Uh, at least they'll give me a chance uh, somewhere else. And I also had found one other uh, company as well in Montreal that actually started up in 1863 so they've been around for a fairly long time it's another headhunters company so I'm hoping to hear from them to see if they have any positions open and if they do I'll be definitely glad to take a look into it so at this point uh, my day is basically done I'm going to just relax a little bit uh, it's kind of brutal sometimes when you do job searches and you're sifting through uh, many different job boards including ones from the government agency like Employ Quebec or from uh, the uh, Canadian government as well. Sometimes you do find seeing some things and sometimes you don't. Uh, I've gone as far as uh, within the surrounding area like when I'm out, seeing if they have any uh, any uh, local companies that are looking for IT people, you know, so I'm looking to see if there anybody's hiring uh, in that area. So some people, some places are, some police places aren't. Even at the local uh, Pacar over here that's close by uh, where GM used to be, right across where GM used to actually have their uh, plant for the Camaro, Firebird, and uh, uh, Trans Am. So uh, I had gone there one time for an open house, and it was very interesting how they made the uh, the, the the tractor trailers in there. Very similar process, just a lot bigger. And uh, I thought that was always an interesting place to even work there. And uh, I tried applying once or twice, and without success, I didn't get any interviews or any type of position down there. I was even if it was just for uh, working on the assembly line there. So, I mean, I like building things too. You know, even building something like a car, uh, which I had during the summertime when I was at GM uh, as a student, and as well as a couple other places. But GM, I remember very fondly because my father worked there. Uh, for a fair, fair amount of time, and I enjoyed, and I took my pride in, uh, even if it was something, you know, well, whether it was welding something onto the car, or preparing something like uh, hood latches, or anything of that nature, 
I took my pride there because I know I built that I built so many X, X amount of cars there during the summer times. I was there for about three summers, and I'm very proud uh, of that. And I can say, you know, without a doubt, that I, I really liked liked working there as a student. And uh, not many people can say that, you know, hey, I used to build, you know, the Camaro, Firebird, or Trans Am, and say, you know, I had some, you know, some input on, well, not input, but I enjoyed doing it, you know. And you learned something about, you know, the, pe you know, different areas of the car, and that was the main thing I liked about it. Anyhow, so I'm going to make this vlog short for today. Uh, if you like today's vlog, you know, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't, comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel. And don't hesitate, please put something in the uh, in the uh, bottom there if you want to say hi and whatever else. Please do. I'm always, I'm always glad to see people come aboard. And that's one thing I like. It's seeing people actually uh, being able to reply back, you know? And being able to answer them back very nicely, too, in, uh, in the vlogs. And that's what I'm here to do. And if you have any other suggestions on projects or anything else, you know, don't hesitate. Let me know, and I'll try to see if I can get them done and put them into a vlog. So, till then, see you guys around.